Welcome to River City Church Wednesday night Bible study. I um, want to welcome you here tonight, and we're going to get started with some praise and worship, and then Pastor will deliver the message that God has for us tonight, so I'm excited about that. So let's pray. Father God, I just lift this night up to you. I just pray, Lord, that you just, you know, bring healing to anyone who is, is sick tonight, who can't be here for whatever reason, Lord either online or here physically, but Lord, I just ask for healing, and, and I, I ask that we bless you, Lord, I pray that we, I, that we bless you tonight, Lord, and I just ask, Lord, that you just make your presence known to each and every one of us tonight, because we know that you're here. Where two or more are gathered, you are here, and we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Ooh. Amen. Kind of a, some strange noise coming out of here. So, okay. it is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise, just to know the Savior. Trust in 
I've ever sung that whole hymn before. I've always, always have just done the chorus. <laughs> I never even knew that there was anything more than the chorus. Man, that was pretty good, huh? Thank the Lord. There is a river. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Amazing Lord. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved all
Do I need the microphone? Okay. Well, I got a little bit of juice for a while, but thank you, Debbie and Linda, for doing things a little bit, a little bit, doing things a little bit different here on Wednesday night. Uh, trying to get back the way we used to do it. We were usually pretty informal about the way that we used to do it, and so now that every every move is is watched and uh, makes us makes us feel a little bit um, a little bit unprofessional. So, but we're not interested in being professional, are we? So, we're just inter- interested in just glorifying the Lord. But um, God is good. Amen. Amen. Uh, just the. Just a couple of announcements uh, on Saturday that we are going to be having another work day down at the youth center. So if you can uh, join us, there will be something that will be posted on Facebook about that. We had a great work day this past Saturday. There was, I don't know, eight, ten more or more, and we got a lot done. And so uh, next time that you go down to the youth center, uh, you may not recognize it. You might be thinking you're going into a new building in which... It, it, it will look like that on the inside, okay? And so we're excited about that. Excited about getting back together again on Wednesday nights with uh, girls' ministries and rangers and uh, journey kids. I don't think that's what they're calling it anymore. Kids for Christ? Is that what they're calling it? Okay, kids. No, that was Sunday mornings. I was saying Wednesday nights is still girls' ministries. Wednesday night is rangers. Sunday mornings is Kids for Christ, okay, and so we're excited about that. That's why we're spending so much time getting the youth center ready because they're going to be meeting down there, okay. They're going to be providing breakfast, which uh, just just keep everybody reminded it's children, <laughs> okay, from, uh, uh, I believe, uh, five years of age up through, um, up through sixth grade, eighth grade, something like that. Anyway. Sixth grade. Okay, I wish I had all this information in front of me. I don't, but uh, but um, so some of us old folks that are, come here hungry in the mornings. You know, I might go down there right before service because I'm usually hungry during service. Go down there and eat what they're going to have, and then come up here real quick. But that probably won't work. So if I can't do it, you can't do it. So, but we're excited about getting you know getting that back together again. That we're you know Wednesday night is is uh, just a night that we are just uh, we are discipling we're teaching we're raising up uh, you know with our young our young people also that uh, on Sunday evening too we'll be getting our youth group back up and running the second Sunday in September so there's just a lot of things going on so keep keep abreast if you want to know what's going on just go to our website or go uh, to Facebook uh, River City Church and you'll see everything that's going on and so uh, there's lots of there's always lots of needs uh, in in the church lots of people who need prayer and uh, it's, it's a little bit different uh, being that we're uh, on Facebook and live in this here but but won't we just uh, pray and just ask the Lord just to touch those who need uh, a healing touch and if you know someone why don't you 
uh, pray for them as well. You don't have to pray for them out loud, but as we come together, as we are encouraged in Hebrews 4.16 to draw near to the throne of grace. So, Father, we just come to you and we just bring the body of Christ uh, here at River City Church in Glassport. And, God, we know there's lots of needs, lots of uh, physical needs, those, uh, those who might be in hospital, those who are in nursing homes, those who are at home not feeling well tonight. And, Lord God, we just uh, believe, God, that you are our healer. God, you're Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals your people, Lord. You love your people, Lord. And, and we just, uh, just pray blessing over them, pray health over them, provision. Lord, that, those that are, uh, Lord, struggling emotionally, perhaps just overwhelmed with stress or, or worries of life. Lord, we just pray the comforter, the Holy Spirit, to comfort them and bring peace to them. Uh, Lord, those who are having issues with the relationships, Lord, whether or not they're marital, a marital or, or they're with a son or a daughter, Lord, we just pray, Lord, for these relationships to be healed. And, Lord, those that are struggling with various things, God, we just know, God, that you are our deliverer. Lord, you're not only our salvation, Lord, you are our deliverance. And we thank you that for the power of your Holy Spirit that lives in us. Now, Lord, I just ask that as we look into your word tonight that you'd open our hearts, open our ears. Lord, let us... Uh, Lord, let us hear with, with, uh, with ears that hear, Lord, a teachable heart. And, Lord, that we can um, just glean from your word. Let it bless us, Lord. Let it strengthen us. Let it nourish us, feed us. And we just thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Okay? And so tonight we're going to be in part two of the Holy Spirit. Last week... Essentially, the whole theme of, of, of last week was dealing with that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ that lives in every believer, okay? That he is uh, the third person of the Holy Trinity. We believe in the Godhead, uh, three persons, one God, and then three distinct persons of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is even right at this moment, we talked about last week, that he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And it is the Holy Spirit who is moving on the earth today, okay? It is the Holy Spirit that is moving in his church, moving upon believers, moving upon unbelievers to become believers. And so, uh, but... But when we receive Christ as our, our Lord and Savior, that, that the Holy Spirit comes into us. And, and he's the Spirit, uh, the Spirit of Christ, okay? So the Holy Spirit uh, represents everything of who Jesus is and what he's done for us. And, and that third person of the Holy Trinity lives in you and lives in I, and it's there to help us in so many ways. And we're just going to talk about a few of them tonight, uh, but what I wanted to talk about tonight is uh, to, I, I want to talk about the three baptisms that we need to experience. Uh, every, every believer, uh, every, every person, let me just say it like that, uh, every person that uh, needs to experience uh, uh, three baptisms, okay, Certainly one they absolutely need to experience, and this is the first one that we're going to talk about, for that the Holy Spirit baptizes us in Jesus, okay? The Holy Spirit baptizes us in Jesus. The word baptism, just to remind you, is the Greek word baptizo, and it means to be totally immersed, if I were to have a bucket of water up here, and I thought about doing that, but then I uh, forgot about it, <laughs> okay? If I had a bucket of water and had a cloth, and I, and I were to take that cloth and immerse it into the water, that, that cloth would be con completely consumed by whatever was in that bucket. It would be drenched. It would be saturated, okay? And, and really, that's what that word means. It means to be saturated. It means, it means to be immersed like a cloth, totally, 
totally immersed, wet, soaked through, okay? And so in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, there are many verses that we could look at, but for time, we're only going to look at one regarding uh, this, this baptism. Uh, the Holy Spirit baptizes us into Jesus, and that's 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13, <coughs> where it says, for, for by one spirit, okay, and, and certainly that's referring to the Holy Spirit, okay, for by one spirit. And in the Greek text, just by the way, is that, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it doesn't have, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, we don't have this in the English text, but it's, but it's prefixed, the word spirit is prefixed with, with, with the A, it's the, it's the, the spirit, you know. So, you know, you, know uh, you might think there's all kinds of different spirits, and, and maybe you do, but there is only one Holy Spirit, okay? And, and so uh, it has the Alpha uh, A in, in front of it, for by one or the Spirit, uh, we were all baptized into one body. And, and certainly we talked about that last week. If you listened to it last week, if you didn't listen to it, I encourage you to, to go to Facebook. You can find it there. Uh, the, and that's a reference to the body of Christ, okay, that we, we, are, we were baptized into the body of Jesus, okay? And so for by one spirit, we are all baptized into what? Jesus. This, this is the first one. We'll talk more about it. The second one is the disciple baptizes us in water, okay? And that may strike you a little weird for me to say that, okay, because we think sometimes that only pastors can disciple people. I mean, not, I'm sorry, baptize, water baptize, wa water baptize people, and that's not, that's not the truth. And so Matthew 28, 19 uh, it says, go therefore and make disciples. That's our job. Of course, they have to get saved first. And, and, and once they get saved, then, then uh, uh, one aspect of baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is water baptism. Okay? And so that we baptize them. Uh, there again, it's the same word, immerse. We particularly, you know, we, how we water baptize people, we immerse them into the water, okay? Now you could sprinkle them and, and so forth. But the point is, any disciple, any disciple can, can, can really, th th there's no specifications about who can water baptize people. I know churches have come up with their own specifications, okay? But it, it's not according to scripture uh, that, um, that I believe that any, any devout, any disciple, and, of course, that's not just talking about a new convert, is it? You know, we're talking about one who is following Jesus, one who's committed to following Jesus. And, and so can baptize people in water. Okay, so that's the second one. And we're not really going to talk much about that tonight. But then the third one is that Jesus baptizes us in or with. It's the uh, preposition in. It can also, also be translated with. It means the same. So if you see it, it sometimes baptized with the Holy Spirit or baptized in the Holy Spirit, it really means the same thing. Jesus baptizes in the Holy Spirit. And this is what the Bible calls, or many uh, know this, uh, you know, this baptism as the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, what I want to just share a little bit about, because this is, creates a... Uh, is, is the first baptism where the Holy Spirit baptizes us into Jesus and the third one where, where, uh, where Jesus baptizes us within the Holy Spirit. There are many who believe that we're really talking about that these two things are talking about the same thing. And it is not true. Okay, we, uh, some folks have allowed their theology <laughs> to get in the way of the accuracy of what scripture teaches, okay? And some actually even reference the, uh, the first baptism, the, the baptism, the Holy Spirit baptizes us into Christ. I don't know if, if you ever heard this before, but I've heard this many, many times from speakers. And many of them are not necessarily 
what we would call spirit-filled, meaning who have received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. But let me just ask you, if you've ever heard this phrase before, uh, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Have you ever heard that? You'll, you'll hear that expression, okay? It's very interesting, okay, because, and they, what they want you to believe is that, is that when the Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ, that that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You follow what I'm saying? Very, very tricky there, okay? Because uh, even, though, even though it is the Holy Spirit's baptism, because the Holy Spirit does baptize us into the body of Christ. It is the Holy Spirit who draws us to Christ, right? Who convicts us. It's the Holy Spirit who, who comes into our lives when we make confession of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the, 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 the death, resurrection, and burial of Jesus. And we believe that, and that is the means of our salvation. And so that's the work of the Holy Spirit, right? Okay. And so if you hear, hear, hear that sometimes, uh, many times they're not talking about the same thing, okay? Actually, if you go a little bit further, if you read some of their books, you'll find out that they deny Jesus' baptism with the Holy Spirit, okay? Uh, that that was for the book of Acts uh, and for the book of Acts only. And when the apostles were, were all gone, okay? which had been John would have been the last one, uh, that, that, that that dispensation or that, that Jesus, you know, that was over. We weren't needed anymore. And then others go on and, and also say that when the scriptures were completed, when we had the co completed uh, work of, of the scriptures, the canon of the scriptures is what it's called, that there was really no need for the baptism with the Holy Spirit because we have everything that we need in the word of God. Okay, does that make any sense? And so why am I bringing this up? Because there again, th this is what you're going to hear. You're going to hear sometimes that, that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the same thing with the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Because the subjects, if you look at the subjects, in the first one, it is the Holy Spirit who baptizes us into what? Into Christ. But who's the subject in the second one? The subject is Jesus, not the Holy Spirit. Okay, Jesus, which I'm going to show you in Scripture, okay, that it is Jesus who baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. So theologically, these are not the same experience. Matter of fact, I believe that all three of these experiences we need as believers. What do you think? Anybody here believe that along with me? That you believe what? I believe that we need to be baptized into Christ. Amen. That's what Romans chapter 6 talks about being, being what? Died with Christ, being buried with Christ, being rose again. That's what water baptism symbolizes. That's not what does it. Our faith in Jesus in the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit is what, is what causes us to be born again. Right? That's the, the Spirit's baptism. Okay? All right? Uh, and so the Holy Spirit's got a major role in our lives. When you think about uh, that he baptizes us into Christ, and then when Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Spirit, all the benefits and all the pluses and all what we get because of that. Amen. We get a whole bunch. We, so those who don't, why am I saying all this here? Is that those of you who don't understand the Holy Spirit, do you understand that, you know, you're probably struggling as a Christian. Because you don't quite understand who this person, not this it or this thing or this whatchamacallit, but this wonderful third person of the Holy Trinity, you're saved because of him. Not because of you, because of him. Now, you had a part to play. You, your part was to believe in Christ. Amen. But it was the Holy Spirit that drew you to that point, who convicted you, who opened your eyes. You would never be looking to Jesus if not the Holy Spirit opened your eyes. Right? Okay. And so, so many people are struggling in their Christian life because they don't understand who this person is. 
Okay, they just figure, well, they got saved because when they just woke up one day, well, I need Jesus, okay? I want to go to heaven. Well, there's a whole lot more than that, all right? And, and so um, we're going to talk a little bit more in the coming weeks about what happens in each one of these experiences. The first baptism where we are, the Holy Spirit baptizes us into the body of Christ, and we're going to talk a whole lot about, about what happens when Jesus baptizes us in with or in or with the Holy Spirit are we everybody on the same page so far very important because I'm telling you you're going to read books you're going to listen to people on the radio you're going to watch people on TV and they're going to tell you that the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the baptism with the Holy Spirit is the same thing and it's not it's absolutely I don't mean to offend anybody but it's stupid to believe it's the same thing it's gr grammatically, it's, and theologically, it's, it's impossible. So, yes, yeah, someone's calling right now to verify this information, okay? Who, who is it? Anybody we know? Okay. Nobody we know. So, so very, very important. Three baptisms. The Bible, now there are other baptisms, but there, you know, and I know that some people say, well, there's one baptism. Ephesians talks about one baptism, but in the context, he was talking about the church. Okay? He was talking about the church, okay? He said, I told you there's only one baptism, and then and they kind of lump water baptism into that, into that as well. No, there's, there's three baptisms that the Bible truly teaches, and each one of them is an experience that every person, you know, the Bible really wants you to experience all three of them, okay? So, um, I kind of went through a lot of my notes, so I got to find out where I'm at here in my notes. Um, So, like I said, the first one deals with how we're born again. The second one deals with the empowerment to be witnesses, okay, and to fulfill the Great Commission. A very interesting little tidbit of information just to tell you how important this is, how important the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, and we're going to be looking at some scripture because we're going to, I told you that we're going to see that in all of the Gospels, okay, that there's only two, two things that are recorded in all four Gospels, okay? The first three Gospels, the Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are called the synoptic Gospels, which they simply mean similar, they, similar. They all deal with the beginning of Jesus's when he was born, okay? John doesn't do that. John, uh, you know, uh, but then it skips right into the third year, okay, where I'm saying John begins earlier in his ministry, so it's totally different. So anyway, there's two things that are, that are in, that two things that are in each of the Gospels. One is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, okay? That's pretty important, don't you think? Now, there's some things that are in Mark and John that are Mark and Luke that are not in John, or there's some things that are in Matthew and Mark that is not in Luke or John, okay? So but we got to complete package all four Gospels because they come from four different points of view. They actually stress four, four different main areas of Jesus' life here on earth, okay? But, but each one of them deal with the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel of Jesus. That's the gospel. Amen. So, so you know, so if one of them didn't, you would really have to wonder where that person was at or they didn't listen to the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit, you make sure you put this in there because this is really foundational to what the gospels are all about. The second thing is the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Think about that. Two things that are, in, that are in each one of the Gospels, each one of the Gospels, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the baptism with the Holy Spirit. That kind of puts an importance on this issue, doesn't it? It really, really does because it speaks about all four of them. So, you know, we, uh, so let's look at one. Let's, 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 well, let's just start in, in, in Matthew. Uh, you'll see that in Matthew chapter, chapter 3, verse 11. We're just going to read them. You know, we're just going to read the verses. You know, we're not going to really spend too much time talking about them. But I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Now, who is I? Anybody? Who's speaking? I? John. John the Baptist. Okay. 
I baptized you with water unto repentance. What's he referring there to? Water baptism, right? Okay. All right. Of course, we know it needs to be preceded by faith, okay? But now that was, you know, they were still in the early parts, okay? But he who, he who is coming, now who's, who's the he? Jesus. But Jesus, who is coming after me, is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will. Who's the he referring to? It can't be John. It can't be the Holy Spirit. It can only be whom? The subject. He is the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus, rather. Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So now let's go to Mark chapter 1. And we'll see this in each one of the Gospels. And you may have, you know, we may have gone through this before. But for those maybe who have not, and maybe this is new to you, this is, this is worth uh, following along and mark 1 verse 8 it says i indeed that is very similar right it's a similar because it's a similar gospel synoptics matthew and mark i john indeed baptize you with water but he this jesus is no doubt if you read the whole context you'll see that it's nothing it couldn't only be jesus will baptize you with the holy spirit okay and so let's go to luke chapter 3 verse 16 and then it said, John answered, saying to them all, saying to all the people that were there being baptized, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. Doesn't that sound very similar? You know, Matthew and, and, and Luke, they must have kind of conspired together, okay? And one who is mightier than I is coming, whose sandal straps I am not worthy to loose. He will, who, who is he? Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Both Matthew and Mark use that expression, Holy Spirit and fire. What was symbolic at the, the physical evidence, not speaking in tongues, but the physical evidence of, the, of when the Holy Spirit, Spirit fell upon the church in the book of Acts was that clothes of fire, tongues of fire came and rest, rested upon them. That doesn't have to happen Every time someone's baptized in the Spirit, we realize that. And then John is the last one, John chapter 1. And now John is, John's different than the, the other three. John, but it's talking about the same thing. And John, I, is John again. I did not know him. Who is he talking about? Jesus. But he who sent me. Now, now who is he here? Who sent John to baptize with water? Now, many believe, many believe that it was the Father, okay? I, I, I don't know how you can prove that, okay? I, I, I don't know if they're trying to prove the whole Trinity thing. There's plenty of other scriptures that speak about the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, okay? But, but anyway, so, but he who sent me, uh, Jesus didn't actually send John, did he? It was the Father probably, you know, or, so anyway, uh, he will baptize. My battery is going to die. Falco, can you grab a couple batteries? It's just kicked out. Um, and so let's just keep reading this here. Uh, I did not know him, but he, so that just kind of tells you, but he who sent me, it might be the father because he didn't know him. John didn't know who Jesus was but until he saw him coming across, okay? He who sent me to baptize with water said to me, upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he, and referring to Jesus, there's no question it can be no one else who baptizes with. And, and so we, we see these three baptisms, okay, and, and they're uh, very, very, very important. Descending, I love that, what John says, because John really opens up another discussion for us another Wednesday night. I think now it might, it may not stay on, but uh, it's going to create another. Dis uh, let's take a break. One second. <laughs> okay. We'll use this one here. Okay. I'm not used to using it here. 
descending and remaining upon him. And, and so I'm not sure what I was saying now. I kind of lost track of where I was at. Anybody can help me out? Where was I? What was I saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. Anyway, uh, oh, speaking about, uh, about uh, this, and I, and I just want to throw, throw something out there. It might be, sound a little sensational. I want to throw it out, just the truth. Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what happened here, actually, when we read it. Okay, if you study that, and it will speak about, it will speak, speak about for the Holy Spirit like a dove. He wasn't a dove. He didn't come, he didn't come as a dove. The dove is not like a Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit came like a dove upon him and rested and remained upon him. And then, and then if you go on in Luke, you'll see that it, it's a reference in that he left and went in the power of the Spirit. Okay. And, and so anyway, we'll talk about that another, another time. But what's interesting and what's something to, to note is, that, is that, that the Holy Spirit never, never up to this point, up until at least until the book of Acts, okay, that the Holy Spirit never came upon anyone and remained and remained upon them. Now, we know in the Old Testament there, there would be times that the Holy Spirit would come upon people to do certain things you know Samson the spirit of God would come upon him and he would have tremendous strength and power uh, the spirit of God would come upon uh, you know various people to do various different things miracles Elijah and so forth and so forth but he never remained upon them okay he would descend upon them there would be a release of power, uh, the power of God, uh, um, the anointing of God, but it would never, never stay, okay? So when did John see the Spirit descending upon Jesus and remaining upon him? At, at, at the water baptism, right, you know, okay? Yes, you did. Now, I just have a question, okay? If Jesus, <laughs> okay, and we'll talk a little, little bit more about this in just a moment. But if, if Jesus needed to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit came upon him, and it descended upon him, and it remained upon him, which is very, very important. Just read through that, and you'll miss something very, very, very important. Because throughout the ministry, when Jesus began his ministry, he ministered in the power of the Spirit. Okay, all right. The Spirit of God and dwelt in him. That same Spirit that rose Christ, what not, he now lives in us. Greater things that we will do because he goes to what? He goes to the Father, but he what? Sends the Spirit to not only come upon us, not just in salvation where we're baptized into the body of Christ, but he comes upon us in power. And he not only comes upon us and then leaves, but he comes upon us and he remains there. Amen. And we, that's why, you know, much of what Paul's teachings, if you think about why does he talk about being led by the Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit is, 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 is a dominant part of his life. The Holy Spirit, you know, not only you know, descended upon him, but remained upon him, just like Jesus, and just like our experience. Uh, now, there is a growing, there's a sanctification, there's a work of the Holy Spirit cleaning us up and purifying us and so forth, and learning to, learning to walk, learning to move in the Spirit, learning to hear the Holy Spirit, and all that's a process, okay? But, um, but it's a wonderful thing when it happens, right? I mean, it's just, it's just, so, um, so if Jesus needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I mean, who are we? <laughs> I mean, who are we thinking that we could live a victorious Christian life, that we could, you know, really uh, tame our flesh, sanctify our flesh, uh, walk in the Spirit of God, do the work of God, manifest His power, manifest His, uh, you know, be witnesses. Uh, you know, how, how can we do that without, without the 
th that third baptism, you know. Well, many, many do it without the third baptism, but they're doing it with, with you know, but they're doing it without a, a, a <laughs> they're doing it without, I'm not saying that they're, they're totally doing it without the Holy Spirit, but they're doing it not recognizing that there is an aspect of the Holy Spirit that, that wants to move in them as well. Does that make any sense? Okay. And so, you know, it's like, you know, you can put, um, you know, you can put regular ga gas in your car. You can put premium, okay? And so maybe that's not a good, good illustration with the gas. But so in summary tonight, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about these three, these three baptisms really symbolize is, is three things. One is salvation. The first baptism speaks about what? Salvation. It speaks about that we, the Holy Spirit, baptizes us into Christ, into the body of of Christ, okay, and uh, you know Jesus didn't need did Jesus need uh, this first baptism? <laughs> no, no, he didn't need this first baptism. Jesus didn't need to get saved, did he? <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, uh, you know, because he saves. <laughs> okay, you know, he didn't need to get saved. He saves. Okay, but prim you know, primarily, you know, see the Bible talks about you and I that we were born what born sinners, and that we need to be what? Born again, okay? Uh, and so Jesus didn't, to be, didn't need, need to be born again because, can I just say that he was born right <laughs> the first time? You know what I mean? He was born of the Spirit. Born of the, the Spirit of God was what, you know, you know was, you know, placed the seed, him, in, in the womb of Mary, okay? And so he didn't need that. Water baptism is the second baptism, and this is a very, very important one. You know, it symbolizes, uh, actually, you know, it's kind of like a funeral. <laughs> it really, it's really like a funeral, but it's got a good ending. Because a funeral usually doesn't have a good ending, does it? But it's your funeral that you're celebrating. Your water baptism is that you're celebrating your death to sin, but you're also celebrating your resurrection to life. And that's just an outward, it's an outward uh, uh, a thing that we are commanded to do, okay? And I'll show you in just a moment where we can see this in the life of the church in the book of Acts, okay, in just a moment. So water baptism is a very, very important, okay? But, it, but water, ba water baptism without number one doesn't make any sense because you're just getting wet, Okay? You're just getting wet, or you're just, you know, I know many, many churches, and we're not here to bash or any, anything like that, but to sprinkle children and to baptize them and, and, and somehow or another, you know, uh, that's not really what the Bible teaches. Read the Bible, and you will see that every time water baptism is referenced, it has to do with a confession of faith coming to Jesus Christ, declaring him Lord and Savior of your life. And then it's, it's to be then proceeded afterwards or proceeded afterwards with what? Obedience of being baptized in water, which is just an outward. It's a public declaration to those around you that you made this decision. And that's what they were do, perhaps doing that day, too, when John was baptizing them, even though they didn't understand salvation yet because they were still under the law, okay? And then, of course, the third baptism that we're talking about is the spirit baptism, okay? And so we're just going to look at that just for a few moments, and then we're, I'm not sure what time it is. I don't have a... Oh, it's up there, 751. Okay, I keep forgetting... <laughs> Al reminds me all the time. There's a clock up there. No, I'm just teasing, Al. In Acts chapter 1, let's look at it, uh, verse 4. And Jesus here, this is after his death, burial, resurrection, before his ascension back to heaven. And this is, this is the fulfillment, the prophetic fulfillment through each one of the four gospels that declared that what? John baptized with water, but there would be one who was coming afterwards who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, okay? Wouldn't just baptize you into the body of Christ, but he would baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire for the purpose of what? Serving, witnessing, fulfilling the Great Commission. In verse 4, and being assembled together with them. I'm going to read up here. I can kind of see it better up there 
Uh, can you go to verse 4? Do you have that? Acts 1, 4, and 5, and then verse 8. Uh, I don't know what that is. When Saul heard that Abner had died. <laughs> okay, that's Second Samuel. Okay. Uh, okay, here we go. That's okay. And being assembled together with them, and you know, referring to Jesus, Jesus appeared to, to, the, to the 120, or at least we think there was at least 120 of them that were in the upper room, so assuming that there might have been 120 there, that he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard. Now, let me just say this here. These, these people were already baptized into the body of Christ. Because if you look in John, you'll see that's when conversion, that's when the Spirit of God came in. In John chapter, chapter 20, I believe, I, I forgot to write that down, but it talks about where Jesus breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit. They became a spirit being. They became born again. Does that make any sense? Read it. That's because that's what exactly what Jesus, that's what happened. So when these guys are listening to it, listening to Jesus, they've already been baptized in the body of Christ or baptized in the Christ. They've already received the Holy Spirit, the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen? All right? You can read it, read it for yourself. We'll look at that next week just in case you don't believe me, okay? Let's go to verse 5. For me, okay, for John truly baptized, now does this does kind of sound what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John said? For John truly baptized with water, now Jesus, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And now go down to verse 8. And this is why they, would need to need, they needed the baptism with the Holy Spirit. But you will receive power. The emphasis of the baptism with the Holy Spirit is power. And powerless Pentecostals are a pitiful thing because we should not be powerless, okay? We, sh we, we should be full of power, full of boldness, all right? But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit, there you go, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Notice the language there, has come upon you. Now, it doesn't say that he comes upon and he remains, but that's the idea, that he's not only just going to come upon you, but he's going to what? Just like my experience, you know, Jesus is speaking about referring to his own experience when the Holy Spirit came and descended upon him and remained upon him. The same thing is going to happen to you. For the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. Because it isn't just a one-time thing that we witness. Amen? It isn't when we just go to have our water baptism that we witness to the church. I'm saved. <laughs> okay? Or whatever. Okay? But this should be an ongoing, lifelong thing. Okay? And to me, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Okay? And so, and then in Acts 2... Uh, we're not going to read that point, but we'll read that probably next week or the week after. That's where it talks about then 50 days after Passover, which Jesus died on Passover, was the promise of, of, of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me show you as we close all three of these baptisms. Okay. Now, you've got to look closely, but they're there in explanation, and I'll explain what they are. And then verse 38. Now, the Holy Spirit comes upon the church. Peter stands up, and he begins to preach under the anointing, of, under the power of the Holy Spirit. And boy, there's nothing better when a preacher is preaching under the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay? All right? So, you know, and I'm sure we don't have the whole thing. Okay? It's probably in a very a, a cliff note version here that we have. But... Um, but listen to what it says. And then Peter said to them, because they, they cried out, what must we do? They were convicted. Boy, the Holy Spirit was there. See, when there's Holy Spirit preaching, the Holy Spirit's going to be there, right? And so what was the Holy Spirit doing, do you think, to all those people who were listening to that day? The Holy Spirit was drawing them. The Holy Spirit was convicting them. The Holy Spirit was opening their eyes and to an understanding about the Messiah that Many of them, you know, they just kind of blew it all. Well, you know, he's dead. <laughs> you know, he died 50 days ago. You know, that's over, you know. But he was revealing. He was opening eyes. He was drawing. He was speaking. He was wooing. He was convicting. Obviously, he was convicting them, right? 
because they cried out, what must we do? And I think that's in the verse right before that, verse 37, right? You can read that. And so then Peter replies to them, repent. Okay? Now, in order to be saved, in order to receive, to be baptized into the body of Christ, what do you got to do? What's the number one? We got to repent. There's got to be repentance. Repentance, okay? Repent. And there, there we see the first, the, first bapti the first baptism. And then what? Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. What is that referring to? That's the second baptism. That's water baptism. For the remission of sins, okay? All right? Because that's what that represents, the remission of sins, the wa wa water baptism, okay? Uh, and so I, I don't know. Maybe they baptized them all right then. They made confession of faith. They repented their sins, and maybe there's a bunch of water there. Boy, can you imagine baptizing 5,000 people? How, how long that must have took? Kind of took a while, I would think. I don't know. I don't know if they were all baptized at that moment, but we can see this. And then notice what it said. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise. And now if you look back, what did Jesus say in Acts chapter 1? Wait for the promise. It wasn't the promise of salvation. It was the promise of what? The baptism with the Holy Spirit. Okay? And so, for the promise is to you, you know, and he was speaking to the crowd of thousands of people. Can you imagine speaking to thousands of people and have no amplification? No sound equipment, no microphones, no amplifiers, no speakers. Wow. I mean, the accusers must have been great there. I mean, really. Or oh, the Holy Spirit was, well, he was doing the work. All right. And to your children, all right, well, we can understand, you know, that many of them had children. Maybe they went back and they, you know. And to all who are afar off. As many, now there, it's even clarified, many believe that's a reference to you and I today. And many who are far off, those are not even born yet. Those are not even alive yet. We're talking about ones today. Many who are far off, not to your children, but your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, your great, 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 whatever, how many generations it is until, or as many, he just, he finally said, as many as the Lord calls. As, as many as our Lord, our God, will save. Amen? Man, every one of them, you know, they need to be what? You know, Peter preaches it right there. He preaches that they need to what? They need to be baptized into the body of Christ. And the Holy Spirit is the one who does that, who brings us into the body of Jesus. They need to be water baptized, which is a symbol of the death, burial, and resurrection that they appropriated by faith in their life. And then, But they need to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. They need to receive the promise, the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? Amen. I mean, maybe if we were at church on Sunday morning, we would be a little bit more excited about that. Hallelujah. You know, and so, and so, you know, th th these are, these are, these are wonderful experiences. And, and, but much of the church today don't believe this. They, they believe this theology that really makes absolutely no sense at all, grammatically, theologically, the subjects who are who are doing things are different how can they be the same how can this how how can it be the same the whole the holy the bat uh the uh, uh i forget even how i said it now uh how did i say it uh, the, the holy spirit uh the baptism of the holy spirit okay it, you know or the baptism with the holy spirit and and and, and it's not the same thing my friends if you look at those things it cannot be the same thing we, we are just being arrogant, and we're allowing our theology, we're allowing what we've been taught, what we've been told to override even what the very scriptures teach, clearly what they teach, that we are, the Holy Spirit baptizes us into the body of Jesus Christ. We're saved, amen, born again. And then Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Spirit for service, amen. And so let's close in prayer. Father, we just thank you for your word tonight. And 
God, I know that there are some people maybe who are listening and listening on that maybe, maybe need to hear this. And maybe they're going to, you know, maybe you just need to listen to it a few times. I just want to challenge you and encourage you to, to read these scriptures and read them with an open mind. Read them with, not with a closed mind, but read them with an open mind. Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you what these scriptures really mean. Not maybe what you've been taught or what you've been pushed down your throat that that, that spirit baptism is, 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 is evil. That's the devil's baptism. I've heard, I've heard that. I've, been, I, I've heard the baptism with the Holy Spirit has been called the devil's baptism. Oh, my gosh. And so, Lord, uh, Lord, you, your church, God, all three of these are powerful experiences that every believer needs to experience. And it's my heart and my desire and my prayer for you that you would come to know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, allow the Holy Spirit to draw you to him. He will. Then be baptized with water. And then seek, ask Jesus to fill you with his spirit, the baptism with the spirit so that you could be a powerful witness to see your family, your friends, your co-workers, your community saved. And so, Father, we thank you. Thank you for this word. And, and God, we uh, just bless the rest of our week. And, God, we just look forward to coming back again on Sunday. And we give you praise and honor and glory for all that you've done. In Jesus' name. And we all say amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great night.